I guess you've kind right. of you've kind of been in, interested generally in apologetics, from what I can tell, for for quite a long time, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, this started for me almost forty years ago, uh, studying under Dr. Norman Geisler in seminary, and um, yeah, it's been a framework for preaching, teaching, ministry, really ever since. I was watching this video with uh, Andy Stanley and Jeff Durbin on the Unbelievable uh, podcast. And to my surprise, which should, shouldn't have been a surprise, Andy Stanley studied under Norman Geisler. And of course, you guys should know about Andy Stanley. He said in uh, 2018 that we don't really need the Old Testament for Christianity. In part because of something in Acts 15 where the the apostle says we don't need to follow the law to be saved. And also because Andy Stanley says that uh, young people don't trust the Bible. So we shouldn't use the Bible since they don't trust it. And what he said in this video with um, with the unbelievable guy, I don't know, Briarly. So none of this is new. It really just is a, a different approach. And it's really putting the spotlight in terms of the foundation of our faith on the event of the resurrection, which every apologist who ever debates any of the new atheists or anybody else, eventually they get to the issue of the resurrection because the documents documenting the resurrection aren't dependent on an, an inerrant scripture. They're just dependent on a historically reliable scripture. So, you know, that's that was the thing that that motivated me. And so I've been talking about this for many, many years, and I kept being misunderstood as people kind of dropped into specific sermons. So one afternoon, Dr. Geisler, he's 86 now, he called me at home. I remember standing on the front porch. He said, Andy, you have to write about this. I'm like, I don't want to write about this. That's that's not my thing. I mean, that's technical. That's a, you know, he says, no, you're going to continue to be misunderstood if you don't write about this. It's not enough to talk about it. So I he did. said that he was teaching on this stuff and um, in his church that we need to stop relying on the Bible and just focus on the resurrection. And Norman guys had called him and said, you need to write a book about this. Oh my gosh, so Norm Geisler basically used Andy Stanley as a proxy for this anti-biblical nonsense. I mean, he's written 100, um, 125 books. And Geisler, in his systematic theology, he says a couple things. He says that God's revelation is subject to logic, the undeniable laws of reason and then later in the in the book he says that god is not himself subject to logic but statements about him are and he goes back and forth between saying that what do you say ontologically god is not subject to logic but epistemologically he is and then he also says that Logic is the basis of all thinking, and therefore, logic is the basis for thinking about God. The first one isn't true, and obviously the second one is not true. Logic is not the basis for any kind of thinking. It is a tool that, if we begin with the right assumptions, and the right beliefs, can lead us to more correct beliefs or correct conclusions. If we begin with incorrect beliefs, we will end up with incorrect conclusions. And logic doesn't change that. It doesn't help that we begin with the wrong beliefs. Our beliefs are the basis for our thinking. And so what what it looks like is going to happen. I'm, I've been doing all this reading. Is that this is going to be uh, mainly Norman Geisler, all his disciples. I said, Dr. Geisler. What has happened to that personal relationship that we talk about with Christ, where the transformation takes place in your heart? Why don't we see that as somehow carrying this person through the struggles of the intellect? He made a remarkable comment, which I think will help answer your question. 
he said to me, Ravi, if you take a healthy newborn baby and throw that baby into a desert, it'll die. Zacharias, Craig, Turek. Aren't you just supposed to rely on God's word, not man's reason? The problem is there's no such thing as man's reason. <laughs> there's just reason, okay? And now Stanley, who all believe that God and his word are subject to logic. Our logic, our reason. Of course, Frank Turek says that reason is basically infallible because there is no such thing as human reason, there's just reason. Human reason being our sinful reason that begins in our sinful hearts. He says that's not a thing, that does not exist. So he doesn't really believe in sin. And Geisler, in their book right here, they barely even mention sin. They barely mention sin at all. Sin isn't something that lives in our hearts. There's no nature. There's no sin nature. There's just things that we do. That's sin. And that was Pelagius. He believed the same thing. And um, Charles Finney is the same way. But Norman Geisler is he's a huge influence. Even today. And he's been dead a few years, but it's just, it's mind-boggling that, I mean, James White is the only guy who's written about him, and he wrote about his one book, Chosen But Free, which is a complete cluster, you know what I, what I mean, and just a bunch of nonsense, where he contradicts himself. In one chapter, he says, God is sovereign over everything. All the scripture, he lays it out. Next chapter, he says, nope, that's not true, because sound reason cannot, cannot accept that. If we are responsible, we must be able, which is logical within a human court system. Western, really, the Western court system. Not logical in scripture. The Bible doesn't say that. At least with regards to God and us. And so his logic was the, the guiding principle, the rule for everything that he concluded. You know, his legacy is honestly a travesty. It's, it's a tragedy on the church. We have guys like Andy Stanley saying... The Bible was just made up. And Frank Turek saying that faith is the opposite of what it is. And honestly, it's just, it's unbelievable. And Rabbi Zacharias, the same thing in his book, he says, We justify God, his existence, his power, everything. We need to prove that he is reasonable God. He is rational to believe in that it is rational to believe in him. And without that we we shouldn't believe in him. And that the scriptural the scriptural answers to these questions of faith, they're not good enough. We need to make up our own. And um that was all Norma Geisler. When I was in Bible school I had a teacher who said the next best thing besides godliness for a Christian is logic. And he said, he said in one of his videos, godliness first, logic second. And of course, godliness is just a, a result. Godliness is not the end, really. Faith is the goal. I mean, godliness is not what we aim for. We aim to trust in God, and we obey God because we trust in Him. We aim to know Him and to trust in Him, and we will obey Him as we trust in Him. We will, we will be godly. But godliness is just morality. Of course, morality doesn't say it. We only obey God because we believe in Him, because we trust in Him. Anybody can, can be godly. I don't want to write this book. 
I really don't. But I can't. I can't stand what people believe this stuff. I don't want to write about Norma Geis. They're being a horrible theologian. Just horrible. Just absolutely in, unconscionable. The 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 core of his belief was the most supremely arrogant I have ever encountered. You know, C.S. Lewis was one. Norm Geisler's worse. It's just, it's unbelievable. And he gave birth to all these other guys. So, what can I do? Anyway, we'll see. I gotta read all these books. It's gonna be a while. This book. This enormous piece of garbage. Where he writes three pages on the Holy Spirit. Twelve pages on logic. Why? This is the abridged version. This is like 1500 pages.